Hey YouTube, welcome to the channel. Hey, um, today I want to talk about having an AGM battery as your primary position in your boat. Uh, it's controversial and uh, let me tell you what happened to me. Okay, so I'm out on my lake and I'm using my big motor and my AGM, uh, my uh, lead acid battery. I ran down, fished for a few hours, went to come back, turned the key, and went click, nothing. Well, I figured the battery's dead, so five, six years old. Got myself back to the dock, came home. I went out and bought an AGM, and I put it in the primary position. And um, I don't know when, but I went to another lake later on where I used the big motor, and I looked at my voltmeter, and as I was running, and it was 12 volts, which means it's not charging. So I came home and checked it out, and turns out I had a burnt out rectifier in my uh, big motor. Took it to the dealer, put a new CDI in it, said everything worked fine. I still had the AGM battery in there. Brought it home, to, put it in the driveway just to check it. Started up and ran it, 12 volts, not charging. So I went out and I bought uh, a replacement CDI rectifier. And I went and I started it up. It went up to 14 point something volts. I said, oh great, it's working. About 10 seconds later, Bam, brought back down to 12, burned out the rectifier. So I called CDI and uh, they pretty much said in a nice way, it's probably something you did, but we'll send you one anyway, which is pretty good customer service. I, I like those guys. Turns out, yeah, I screwed up because when I got it, I started reading it and researching it and they don't like you using that with an AGM battery because the AGM battery should not be charged more than 14.2 volts. Um, because they'll, they will shorten the life of the AGM battery and possibly burn out your rectifier, which I guess is what happened to me. Okay, so I put my old lead acid battery back in with the new rectifier, came right up, charged, held up for like 10 minutes, no problem. Well, here's the story between the two batteries. An AGM battery will hold this voltage for a long period of time and then it will fall off, where a lead acid battery will just gradually decrease in voltage as time goes on. Well, these sonars today, uh, you get down below 10 volts and they start to get funky, at least mine did. They'll start to blink, reboot, or not work at all. And that's what usually happens to them. Now, I got two HDS9s, I got active target, live wells, talons, and uh, uh, lights. So uh, I wouldn't want to be out in the water for six, eight hours with a lead acid battery and uh, start to have issues because it will drop below 10 volts, at least I've seen that already. So that's where the AGM pays off. Now, if I mentioned before, I'm in PA, so 80% of my fishing is done with a kicker motor or electric. So if I'm out six, eight hours, I want an AGM battery. I want that thing to last all day long. If I'm going out on a, a, a lake where I can use the big motor, then I'll, uh, I would run the lead acid. So what's the solution? Uh, swap the batteries, when I, depending on what lake I want to go to? Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And, uh, Got to make it easy to do, of course, and uh, let me show you how I did it. Okay, so these two were my trolling motor batteries, and right now I have the AGM in the primary position. And um, normally there's five wires on each terminal, which means I'd have to take 10 off every time I swap them back and forth. You might forget one, who knows? So I want to get it down to two. So what I did was I had this old piece of marine starboard here that uh, I had from another project a couple of acrylic tubes with some screws going down through and I had inserts in the starboard. Let me get you a little closer here. I have inserts in here so there's nothing protruding down to the gas tank. There's actually an eighth of an inch gap between the bottom. So I have my uh, circuit breaker for the trolling motor, two um, terminal blocks that I bought from Amazon, and this is a battery switch. Uh, a little overkill because I have fuses on everything, but uh, this is a nice way to just cut, cut off the system if you have an issue. Or when I'm swapping batteries too, I like to use uh, this cutoff switch. Now what I did was on these heavy uh, six gauge wires that come from the motor, uh, I cut those because they were pretty long and I was able to put in um, these terminals here uh, with, a, with a burn matic and solder and some shrink tubing. And you can see them right here. And uh, that gave me enough drop off so I can use, uh, this goes to the motor and then these of course come from the switch and, and the terminal block so I have these left over. 
Okay, so what are the caveats in all this? Well, below there you can see my Minn Kota charger, and I'm going to have to tell that uh, whether I have an AGM or a lead acid in place because it will uh, charge differently. It's not going to overcharge the, uh, the AGM. Uh, that's what the settings are for. Otherwise, um, we're talking cost. So the, the lead acid battery cost me as much as a rectifier, so that's a wash pretty much. And let me show you the rectifier. This is the, uh, the CDI rectifier, which works great, at least so far. Pretty happy with that. And uh, so if this has ever happened to you guys or you have, uh, you've heard of it and you had this issue, boy, I'd, I'd like to know some opinions because the pros uh, don't do this. The pros, well, they're using big motors all the time anyway, but they're using AGMs and they're using uh, lithiums. Of course, they probably get them for free but I never hear anything about that. But if you do your research about the uh, lead acid versus uh, AGM, you're gonna see that there is a, an issue there. So I'd love to hear comments and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, guys.